One minute to go. <laughs> okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Stepan. Now I'm working for a, a US based pharmaceutical company, an IC center in Prague. In the past, I worked at Microsoft for many years, and my hobby is microelectronics, microcontrollers, you know, and I like to play with toys, as probably any adult man. Okay, so what is GPIO? The GPIO is uh, general purpose input output. <coughs> so those are those small pins on Raspberry Pi. So how many of you does have Raspberry Pi? Okay, how many of you tried to blink diode? Okay, so today you will see much more. You will see I2C communication, how it works. And you will learn how to build your own modules, which can enhance 
possibilities of on functionality of uh, Raspberry Pi. So those pins, there are a lot of them. You probably know that on the older versions, there were just 26 of those pins. The new version has 40 of them. So there are some changes, some enhancements. And almost every, this, every pin is configurable and you can, it can work just the basic zero one logic. So you have there zero volts or three dot three volts. Or you can configure it to do something else. For example, you can configure it to use it as I2C bus or SPI bus and much more. We start with this. So those pins are not five volts tolerant. How many of you does have Arduino? Everyone has Arduino. Arduino is okay with five volts. Raspberry Pi not. So if you don't want to destroy your Raspberry Pi, you must use 3.3 volts logic. Five volts will destroy it. So be very careful about that. As I told you, those pins support the basic digital logic, zeros and ones, zero volts, 3.3 .3 volts. You can use uh, I2C bus. Uh, I2C bus is quite uh, maybe tricky for you because if you will read some documentation for older versions, some commands will not work because you have two I2C buses on Raspberry Pi. In the old version, you use bus zero and bus one is not connected. In the new version, it means A plus, A plus or B plus, you will use bus number one and bus number zero is connected to a special kind of the memory where you can download, or this memory is uh, used to be identify shields you connect to Raspberry Pi. SPI, there are two uh, chip select uh, pins. If you need more, if you need to connect to SPI bus more devices than two, you, you can do it, but uh, it will be up to you to control chip select signal properly. PWM, it's quite a big issue because there is only one hardware PWM, you know, this pulse width modulation. There's only one hardware, and this one is connected to audio channel. So if you want to use hardware PWM to control, for example, servos or to control motors, you must disconnect audio channel from this pin, so you switch the audio channel to HDMI channel. So be careful about that. And there is one, hard, uh, and there is one hardware uh, serial port available. So here is the list of uh, GPLs you can find it on internet. This is the basic one, and for the new versions you have more of them. And here you can see the pins 27, 28. It's a I2C bus number zero. It's connected to a PROM, or should be connected to a PROM, which identify the shields you connect to Raspberry Pi. Or those shields are called heads. Uh, I will show you, or in my demos you will, show, you will see the older version so I'm not even using the plus version. The reason is that I don't have the proper cable for this 40 pins, uh, uh, 40 pins connector. But the pin number one is on the left, and this is the Raspberry Pi B plus. So not, it's not the newest version. The newest version is version two with different processor and uh, mo much more memory. Okay. So now I hope I'm connected to internet. So I show you. Very nice page, I hope. Oh, I don't have to bookmark. Ah, okay, I know. It's quite new computer, so let's try to search it.
Okay. It will take, it will take some time because of the network connectivity, so I will continue. I go, I go one slide back. I want to show this. If you will work with the pins, the pins can, the pin can be identified in three ways. By the name, by the number of the pin on the Raspberry Pi, or by the number of the pin on the processor. So in different samples of the source code, you will see probably different numbers of the pins, and sometimes it's not easy to identify which pin to use. Of course, if you will see the name, it's clear, but if you will see number, it can be number of the pin on the connector, or it can be number of the pin on the chip. So be careful about that. And there is a very nice tool I tried to show you on the internet where you click the pin and it shows you all names and all functions which this pin can have. Okay. How to connect to Raspberry Pi without keyboard and without TV or some monitor? In the basic setup, and you can use it really from the scratch if you download the empty, if, uh, if you download a uh, new image and you upload the image uh, to SD card and you start the device for the first time, the basic configuration is that, you, that the text console is connected to serial port on Raspberry Pi. So you just start your Linux machine or Windows or any machine, you connect to serial port and you will have screen there. So you don't need to run from the beginning using the keyboard or looking for HDMI cable to connect it to some TV or stuff like that. So, <clears throat> I try to show it. So, let's go here. So you know the basic solution of everything from Microsoft restarted. So here you can see it's a converter USB to serial port and this one is 3.3 volts so be careful to buy the proper one because much more common is that those converters work with 5 volts logic. It destroys Raspberry Pi. And just run uh, screen command. And here I am connected to console of Raspberry Pi. So I can very easily control it from my device. It's very useful and I know that not so many people know about it. It's very useful, so you don't need any other devices with you, just your laptop. So let's go back. If you want to, if you don't want to use it like this, so you need the hardware serial port, very easy way, you go to, Raps, you run the Rapspi config, and you disable it in Rapspi config. So you disconnect the text console from, from the serial port. The basic speed is set to 115200. <coughs> and again, 3.3 .3 volts logic. Be very careful about that. Every programming language has hello world. Probably you know, to, you know how to write hello world for tens of languages. And the hello world for the hardware is blinking the duct. So now we. I will show you a couple of applications that will just blink the diode to understand the principles, and then we will continue this uh, I2C bus. So, So the, probably the easiest way, or you will find the most examples the, of how to use the Raspberry Pi and GPIO, you will find those examples written in uh, Python. It's the most common. 
if you need to, if you need a better control, especially about the speed of the application, of course you can install real-time Linux on Raspberry Pi. There are many of them available. And then there is a very nice library uh, for C, which you can use really to control in real time what you need. Of course, it will not work real time now because I'm not using the real time Linux. So let's go to Python. So we yeah, have very simple application. RPO, RPI GPIO module is pre-installed, so you don't need to install this module. And this module can control pins. I am using GPIO board pin convention. It means I am using the number of the pin on the connector. Or you can, show, you can change it. You can use the name of the pin. GPL setup, number of the pin, 11, and it will be, it will work out like output. If you need to read data, you configure it as input. And as some stupid loop, and here, this line is very, very important, GPL cleanup. If you don't call this one, the, the pin can be blocked by operating system. So if, if, when you run the application, for example, next time, you get the exception that the pin is not in, is not in a proper state. So it's a good idea to call this one when your application ends. Unfortunately, I didn't find a way how to use GPIO pins without uh, sudo. So we need... <laughs> how? Guys, ah, cool. <laughs> it's, it's too big. Zero. Ah, how to go, go it down? Minus? minus. Doesn't work. Control minus. Control minus. Doesn't work. Every time when I speak, I learn something new. Cool. So, Python. Cool. And this you can do in C, in Bash, or in Rub Ruby. I have samples. And uh, look now, when I close it, I didn't. It stopped blinking. It's the correct stuff. Sometimes if you don't do the cleanup, the diode can still be on. So for example, if you want to use, uh, so I show you just in, you can imagine how it works in C, but let's try this one. When you install when you install the library for the C, which is called wired P, then you will have a couple of simple, simple tools to control the pins. So this one, GPIO, is a simple application written in C. It's from library wire, uh, wiring P. You will see it, this library later today. So you can use the pins even from Bash. There are a lot of very small useful tools in this C library. So it will do the absolutely the same as the blinking diode using uh, uh, Python. Uh, the cleanup is handled inside the GPIO. So it works it works a little different way. How does it know the number eleven? Because this is uh, I am working with uh, number zero because this library used the number of the pins from the chip, not from the connector. 
But if you write the application in C, you can choose which numbering style of the pin you want to use. Here, this simple, this simple tool use the numbering, different style of the numbering. It's sometimes really tricky because you try it, you connect it to zero and nothing happened. By the way, the zero pin is uh, plus three volts. So, be careful. And uh, here you can see the code uh, in C pin mode, right, high, low, it's very clear. And again, I am here, here I am using the default numbering style. If I want to use different one, there is, a, there is a command how to change the numbering style. Okay. So the basic configuration, if you want to use uh, different buses like I2C or SPI or one wire, you need to install uh, you need to install some packages and to load some kernel modules uh, into uh, into kernel so this is the uh, setup for the system so the basic gpio is available by def by default from from the new uh, from the new image if you want to use something advanced i to see spi one wire you must install modules and install necessary tools. It's not available by design from the beginning. For C and Bash, you install a wiring P library. Uh, open source library, you just download it from, I think it's on GitHub. So you download, you clone it from GitHub and uh, compile it. So of course you need to install the uh, com compile tools on uh, your Raspberry Pi. For the Python, there is a, the basic library is uh, RPI GPIO. It, again, it's available from the scratch. If you want to use I2C or SPI, you must install Python as a bus library, uh, package, sorry. And for Ruby, you install uh, gem, wiring pi. It's a just wrapper for Wiring Pi C library, so it will install it on the backend. And you must have Ruby Dev uh, package installed because you must compile it together with the Ruby libraries. In uh, ETC modules, you must enable SPI Dev, I2C Dev, uh, W1. It's a one wire. Uh, it's a one wire bus. Uh, do you know the sensor called the HT22 or 11? It's a very common sensor measuring uh, humidity and temperature. Okay, it's not a one wire bus, so it will not work here with this one. There is a one wire bus designed by Texas Instruments, so it supports this one. It is not, it will not, it will not work with the HT sensor. And by the way, if you want to use the DHT sensor, because it's quite common, it's quite good, not expensive. You will have a lot of issues because it, work, it works great on Arduino because Arduino is real time. It's this here. We are not working typically with the real time Linux and it's quite tricky to read the data from the HD sensor. It takes, it takes usually five, six readings to get the <coughs> proper data with the correct uh, control, control in the software. Check some, thank you. W1 term is a uh, one wire thermometer from uh, Texas Instruments. So, my favorite bus, my favorite bus is uh, I2C because it's quite easy to use it. And it's quite easy to build your own modules using this, uh, using this bus. You will see how to build those modules today. So first, I have uh, 
couple of devices connected to I2C bus. So if we go here, so the I2C bus are those, is this orange and green wire here. They are connected to Raspberry Pi, and Raspberry Pi works as I2C master. Here is first device. I2C is a small matrix display. And this device here is a simple microcontroller based on uh, PIC PITS microcontrollers. And it works like another I2C device. I'm using it to extend the functionality. You will see it later. So first, very, very useful tool is, again, sudo i to see the detect. And now I must specify the number of I2C bus. I'm using old version of, our, of Raspberry Pi. It's number zero. New version is number one. And here, you can see a problem. I am missing one device. Never mind, we will solve it. So the number 70, 70 is, a, uh, is the address of uh, one device. And there is one missing, number 30, 34. So let's give me a sec. Ah, it's much better now. So we have 34, it's another. You can have up to 128 uh, devices there on this serial bus, or this simple bus. Um, and you just access those devices, you call the address, and then you write some information to that address or read. Typical I2C device behave as a mem very similar to memory. So you have uh, memory cells, you are writing information to the cells, or you read from different cells, you read the information. So it, the, the system is very easy to understand and very easy to use. So almost every device on I2C bus behaves like a EEPROM memory. So how, how does the device get the numbers assigned? It's signed typically. Uh, you find it in data sheets. So, for example, if you buy a EEPROM memory for I2C, this memory is, there is a predefined address. It's hard-coded. Hard and typically, uh, when you are, typically when you are using those uh, EEPROM memories, if you connect some pins of the memory to the high voltage, you can change the address. So typically, every I2C device has something like three hard-coded addresses, and you can choose one of them. Or, you will see it later, because I use the microcontroller as an I2C, I2C slave, and then you program in, in, in your application, you say, okay, this will have this uh, address. So. So first, we will do this. I think today I will have no beer because I stand too long in Brno. <laughs> so, how it works? Let's show the code. This is the, more, this is the funnest part. Uh, just by the way, see I run the code and the display holds the state. So it's quite good that you don't need to uh, to run the code again, again, because you just send the information to external device, and device will keep everything for you. So how it works? This matrix is every single dot on the display. My device has the address in hexadecimal 70. 
Here you can see I write to bus some data. Every time you write to some address, on the device there are a lot of memory cells. So you choose the cell you want to change and you write something. Imagine this is command. Where to send the command and the value of the command. If I go down. Uh, is the value binary? Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a byte. So you need to check the documentation what to write there. Uh, by the way, this uh, this display I'm using here works a uh, little different way. So this first command is uh, start the uh, oscillator. Second one is start uh, the lights. And it doesn't matter. Watch which value you send, it, uh, it's enough just to touch the memory cell. But more common is that you write some value <coughs> with some meaning to some memory, memory cell. And here I am writing, so every row as uh, address, I'm starting from address zero because there is a chip which can control bigger displays. I skip every second row in the memory because for this display I need to write only every second to, uh, to every second row of the display because the rest one is for bigger displays. And And here is the sample for uh, using the C. It's almost the same. I am using uh, I am using different uh, I am using different uh, device, so you can see different address. And then I am reading from device from some memory itself on the device. And it's up to device to fill proper data to the cell. I try to run this one. It's a value of the amount of the light. So I have the light sensor. I will speak about it later. And it shows me how much light we have here. Very simple. And again, I just read the information from some cell, from some memory cell on the device. Can you cover it and run again? <laughs> <laughs> there is no print 209. Okay. So, let's move. And of course, what you can do. Uh, I try to move this little one. And of course you can uh, you can access using the simple tool you have I2C set and I2C get. So if I run this one, it will switch the display off. Don't switch it off. Change Change one. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I must write application to you know to write the if you to paint something and transfer it translate it to the zeros and ones for this display. So it took me so many time because the display is rotated, and you know sometimes the imagination you want to rotate something, how to change the numbers. It took me like hour to prepare this beer. <laughs> and I, believe me, I had a couple of them as inspiration. Okay. As far, everything was nice, but we have some limits. The first one, pseudo C logic. The more, more common, let's say, in the hobby world for hobbies is 5-volt logic. First problem. 
Second one, there is a current limit for, for the pins. So there are some pins that can handle up to 50 milliamperes. There are a couple of them handle, which can uh, handle something like 16 milliamperes. So you must be very careful not to overload it. There is no analog to digital, digital converter. So for example, you cannot directly, the light sensor is the analog one. It's a simple voltage divider, very simple device. So you cannot connect it directly. You need some, some, some device between to convert analog voltage to digital information. There is no real-time clock on it. So every time you start it, you start with some date and time. Of course, if you are connected to internet, it, uh, there is, it works automatically, so it just downloads from some time server the information. But if you want to run it standalone, there is no real-time clock. You must use it as an external device. And only one hardware PWM for pulse width modulation. So how to deal with this? First, use proper hardware, or it will cost the money. Or you can buy very simple, you can buy very simple level converter. The price is very cheap. You go typically buy it on Adafruit. On Adafruit, there, there, are, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of stuff you can buy for the Raspberry Pi. Or in Czech Republic, there is a company, Hobby Robot, which is uh, Adafruit reseller. They have a lot of stuff on stock, so you can very easily buy it there. Also for the Czech people here, I, I would been really successful for searching for these things on Outro. Outro will see that there are like yeah. these guys who order hundreds of them and then they sell, sell it. Outro, so. so it's quite easy to get it. Yeah, it's really cheap that way. Yes. Can you repeat the name of the reseller? Hobby Robot. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you want it now, DX takes too much time for Europe. Current limit, very easy. First, use the external power source for devices connected to Raspberry Pi. Here you can see that I run, I run it from battery. I told you you need to use 3.3 .3 volts. You see three batteries. So it's how much volt is it? No, so they are researchable, uh, they are rechargeable, so it's 3.8, so it's okay. <laughs> but really don't use the three proper 2A batteries. And of course, some electronics, so use simple transistor switch or stuff like that to avoid big current running directly from the pins. ADC, real-time, and uh, PWM. A lot of external modules you can buy. Typically, those modules are connected to I2C bus. So this is the reason why I'm showing you the mainly I2C, because it's the most common way how to connect those external modules. There are available a lot of modules. If you need a very high precise real-time clocks, you can buy it. If you don't need so precise, you can buy two. It's, everything is available, and it doesn't cost so much money. But it's not so fun to buy the module which is ready. So you can uh, create your own one. And from my point of view, the easiest way how to do it is to use those microcontrollers. You probably know uh, microcontrollers from uh, Atmel. Aver, AVR. Do you know from uh, microchip PITS, PIC? This is PIC with basic inside. So you program it in old fashioned basic language. It's super easy. So, for example, if you want to control servos, there is a command servo position. If you want to read data from some common thermal sensor, there is a command get temperature. So it's super easy to use, and it's extremely easy to prepare modules connected as I2C slaves. So, I show you five minutes, okay. So. Uh, no.
So if you find, uh, if you want those uh, demos, just go, just find my name on GitHub and everything is there. I am. What's your name? <laughs> Stepan Bechinsky. So can you see it? So it's very easy. It looks strange if you don't know how microcontrollers works, but I have an interrupt here. So every time someone writes data to that chip, there is a piece of memory called scratchpad memory where you can write data and read data. So if someone tries to read something or, or write, I check what is written to the memory and then I change some pins. And this is the controller for several segment display. Show you it in few seconds. So it's very easy to use this kind of microcontrollers for your own modules. Here at the beginning, in the main loop, you can see read ADC. So I'm reading the value from the light sensor into memory B1. Then I transfer it from memory B1 to cell zero of the scratchpad memory, and the cell zero is available on I2C bus. That's all. So ADC converter, five lines, something like that. It's very easy to use it. So to my last demo, so I try to show you this one. This is the common display to show the numbers, but if you want to control this display, you need a lot of pins. And those pins are probably not available free on your Raspberry Pi. So using a simple chip, the price of this chip, this is a really big one, is 270 crowns, but you can use the smaller one and the price will be 170, something like that, it costs nothing. And you have a lot of pins on it, which you can control using I2C. You program in basic, you don't need any special hardware programmer, you need just serial cable and two resistors, that's all. Everything is available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows for all operating systems. Okay. So it was my last demo. I hope I attract you to start you to start building some hardware stuff, not just writing the software, because it's much more fun. It can be very dangerous, especially if you are using the soldering. You need to solder something, and it's really funny. Okay. Questions? What about the PWM? Is it somehow exported under this? PWM, if you use, for example, those chips, there are, this one has seven independent PWM channels. I meant the one that is on the Raspberry Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, this is only one, which is connected to audio channel, or you can create the software one. So, for example, in the C library, Wiring Pi, there is a command create software, PWM, but of course, your application must still running to keep sending the signals, and of course, the precision is not so good. So, for example, for if you have the high quality servos, they will shake it because the signal is not enough precise. Yes, it's accessible. You can use it. It's uh, from, source, from source code. You know, it's, uh, again, if you use the C, C library, there is a command use hardware PWM. Okay. Same for Python. I think there is no library for, I'm not sure about the software PWM for Python because it's not <coughs> quick enough. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. So if you have some questions, it will take me a couple of time to pack everything. So. I am available for the questions. Thank you.
Zobaczcie, że to nie jest dobre. Zobaczcie, że to nie jest dobre. Zobaczcie, że to A tento káblik se dá zohnat. Je to od Adafruidu, to se dá normálně koupit, stojí to, jen si říkala, stojí. Nemůžem použít prostě taky, co mám z hard disku. No to můžu. Sorry? Co je to způsobem? Extender, cable, and... Uh, I don't know what it's called. T-cobbler, I think. Yeah. Not sure. But if you go to Adafruid, you will find it. Just to extend the pins on the breadboard, right? Yes. It's just to... Easy way how to get those pins to the breadboard to start playing around. Mm -hmm. And why did you have to do the ADC thing? I didn't understand. But what is the need for ADC? So this one is need for ADC. Uh -huh. So because this sensor is analog one, oh, okay. it, it's a just voltage uh, divider. Okay. Uh, do you want some water? It's really nice. So you are reading from this sensor. Sorry. So you are reading from this sensor, yes. right? Yes. It's an NDR. Yes, I yes. Okay, so you read from that, you and you have a program there here huh? and send this information through I two C bus to to your pin. Yes. Okay. So does this reach temperature? No. It's just a light thing, right? It's just a light one, so light thing. I didn't understand the meaning of your demo. Why, like zero one two three nine? How is it related to this LDR thing? There is no connection. It's, it was just uh, how to show that you can extend those pins using external chip. So it's not related together. Okay, I got confused because of that. So, but uh, okay. So, so you actually have to write some program here to read the data of this. Yes. And then. Uh, pass it on to your GPIO pin. Yes. And then process it in the program on your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So it's like two processors connected. Two processors connected. Okay. Thank you. By the way, about cables. I really recommend DuPont cables for, for this. I, I am using Why? it too, but you know, there are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because they are convenient, because you can connect only the pin C. Ah, okay. 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 Děkuji pěkně. Naschle. Předsedo, nenašel jsem vás na GitHub. Stefan Bechinsky tam má. Ah, je to Stefan. Dobře.